Good evening, I'm Bo Williams and welcome to The 7. Let's get a look at the Big 7 stories right now and topping the list for us tonight, a search for more substitute teachers as the school year starts. As a matter of fact, Anderson County Schools making changes in hopes of making the fill-in jobs a little more attractive. One shakeup in the pay structure. The district used to base substitute pay on school needs. Now all subs will make the same rate no matter the school. $80 per day if they are not certified or don't have a degree, $95 if they come with a degree and certification. They'll also be able to work more hours, and some would-be substitutes will have the chance to pick their assignments. You can isolate yourself to one particular school and one particular uh, you know, grade band. If you don't want to do kindergarten, you just want to do first through fifth, uh, some people are a little intimidated by kindergarten, you can. Or you can do, uh, you know, you can go, I want to do uh, elementary, middle, and high school. So you can have that flexibility of choosing what you want to be available for. With ESS, now they can work as many days as they want to. ESS also offers uh, health insurance and benefits, so they can draw from those as well. Any of, any of the employees can. But, uh, you know, a large majority of our substitute work force are retired teachers that come back. The ESS mentioned by spokesperson Ryan Sutton is a subcontractor which handles substitute staffing. That's how Anderson County is able to get around the state rule capping hours for retired teachers. Would be substitutes apply for these jobs through the company at ESS.org. The first students in Anderson County, by the way, go back to school next Monday, July 31st. And that starts really a, a staggered first day of classes uh, that will be scheduled through August 2nd, depending on grade level. Now, the back-to-school season is already up and running. You're looking at video from last week when Alcoa City Schools brought students back to the classroom. Blunt County Schools and Maryville City Schools start back next Tuesday, August 1st. And then right here in Knox County, kids go back for a half day two weeks from today on August 8th. If you need a reminder, by the way, of your kids' back-to-school date, get out your phone, scan that QR code right there in the middle of your screen. We have a full list of those start dates for you for students all across the area. It's at our website, wate.com. Well, Tennessee's back-to-school tax-free weekend starts one minute after midnight this Friday, so early Friday morning, if you will. It's become a state tradition for the last weekend of July. The usual limits apply once again for 2023. On the tax-free list, clothes less than $100 per item, school and art supplies, plus computers, including laptops and tablets, if they cost $1,500 or less. The sales tax holiday ends at 11.59 p.m. Sunday, July 30th. And then a day later, the next tax holiday hits, this time on groceries starting at 12.01 a.m. August 1st. It runs a lot longer, though, all the way through one minute to midnight on Halloween, uh, October 31st. The extended the grocery sales tax holiday passed along with the Tennessee Works Act signed into law earlier this year. Here again, state put limits on the tax break, though. It doesn't cover alcoholic drinks, uh, tobacco, candy, or dietary supplements, plus items sold from what the state calls a, quote, micro market or vending machine. Our next Big 7 story for you, new information on a motorcycle wreck that left one man dead. Tonight we know that man's name, Michael Thomas. Police say Thomas was 44 and lived right here in Knoxville. The crash happening on James White Parkway around 3 Monday morning. Knoxville police believe Thomas was headed south when his bike hit the inside wall. We'll check back for more updates on this crash as that investigation continues. Next on our Big 7 list for you, a bump in the road to the White House as the race for president comes through East Tennessee. Uh, the T-Dot camera was rolling in Chattanooga when a motorcade carrying Florida governor and Republican presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis got into a crash. The collision happening this morning was right there on I-75. Chattanooga police say the campaign cars, four of them, really smacked into each other when traffic slowed down. Now, Governor DeSantis was not hurt and we're told he was able to keep going with the day's schedule of campaign stops, one of which by the way, brought him to Knoxville. It was a private event, so our cameras were not allowed inside. Also from your local election headquarters, State Representative Gloria Johnson, sounding more like she plans to challenge Senator Marsha Blackburn. We told you back in May, the Knoxville Democrat was considering a run against Senator Blackburn. Well, today we checked back, Johnson taking a jab, saying, quote, Tennessee has a senator that stands with bullies. I have a reputation for standing up to bullies. This comes after her time in the national spotlight as one of the Tennessee Three. State lawmakers who brought protest over gun control rules after the Covenant School shooting to the floor of the State House.
Johnson stopping short of making the run official. Her statement also saying, quote, I'm taking a serious look at this race and having great conversations with folks who are, are, who are hungry for better leadership in Washington. Both races, of course, are well into the future, but don't forget about a, a much more local vote, and that's coming up next month. We're talking about the end of August primary election, and here in Knoxville, voters get to choose among mayoral candidates, city council at large seats A, B, and C. Also on the ballot, city council district 5 and municipal court judge. Early voting starts Wednesday, August 9th. That's two weeks from tomorrow. And if you want to cast a ballot, you'll need to register to vote by next Monday, July 31st. Early voting, by the way, runs through August 24th. During that period, you can vote at any of the county's six early voting locations. And if you wait until Election Day, Tuesday, August 29th, you'll have to vote at your assigned precinct. A big report on how lives come to end here in Knox County out tonight. The figures showing suicides were up and so were fatal drug overdoses. Those are just two takeaways from the Knox County Regional Forensic Center's annual report covering all the work done there. Medical examiners counted 544 drug-related deaths in 2022. That is actually up by 2% from 2021. The center also counts up drug deaths for Anderson County. 66 last year, a drop of 22%, coming off a sharp increase the year before when drug deaths were up by 67%. The head medical examiner puts the blame again on co combinations of drugs as the reason for most of those deaths with a growing addition of xylazine, also known as Trank, showing up in those lethal mixes. And she points to a trend of young people ages 15 to 24 is showing the sharpest increase in drug-related deaths. Now, according to the report, suicides increased by 30%, the largest increase among uh, many here, in, uh, or among manners of death, I should say. Chris Thomas with the Forensic Center says, on average, they see between 80 to 90 suicide deaths in a year, but last year they saw 114, and that's just in Knox County. So take a moment and look at your screen. This is the Suicide and Crisis Lifeline. If, you're, if you or someone you know is struggling, this service is there to help you out. All you have to do is dial 988 or you can go on their website in 988lifeline.org. But again, seek it out if you or someone you know is in need of some help. Now, we need to point out again that this set of figures out tonight compares 2022 to 2021. Keep in mind, that's a different set of numbers than we brought you yesterday, focusing on suspected overdose deaths last year and so far this year. And if you are a loved one, again, dealing with those addiction issues, uh, there is that help. And again, we've got the uh, free confidential helpline for you called Tennessee's Red Line. The number on your screen, 1-800-889-9789. All right, we have some more unfortunate numbers on our Big 7 list for you tonight we want to pass along to you. This past weekend's deadly boating accident on Norris Lake is the state's 18th death on the water in 2023. In this case, the victim, a young boy, killed when two boats crashed near Norris Landing Marina. There have been 27 injury crashes with 41 people hurt, as well as 44 crashes involving property damage. TWRA encourages boaters to not have their vision obstructed and to not boat alone. You know, normally we uh, really stress the, uh, the importance of wearing a life jacket while boating because most people who die in boating accidents drown and most people who drown aren't wearing a life jacket. But we've seen uh, several collision type incidents this year that have resulted in uh, fatalities. So, um, you know, a life jacket uh, a lot of times wouldn't have made a difference in these types of accidents. So uh, when, when boats collide with one another, uh, you get uh, serious bodily injury and a lot of trauma. There were 29 boating deaths last year. State wildlife officers say Tennessee averages 22 boating deaths per year.